Peace to you, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Let us now come to God in prayer for uh, the preaching of God's Word. Heavenly Father, we are blessed today because again, your Word is going to be preached. We will hear you again speak to us. And this morning, allow us to sit at your feet and uh, offer ourselves as a living sacrifice before you. And we seek your mighty cleansing, your uh, getting rid of our sins before your sight through the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And again today, uh, we are continuing with our study on the book of Leviticus. We are still uh, in the uh, initial stage of it, and we are still going to uh, have a brief understanding of the different rites, R-I-T-E, of, uh, of the lessons pertaining to the sacrificial offering. So with this, we ask your understanding and uh, illumination, O oh God, to be upon each and every one of us as we humble ourselves before your throne of grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> so, uh, I'd like us to read again uh, Leviticus chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. So, last time we read Leviticus 1, verses 1 to 4. Today, we will add another verse. So, it says there, The Lord called to Moses and spoke to him from the tent of meeting, he said, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When anyone among you brings an offering to the Lord, bring as your offering an animal from either the herd or the flock. If the offering is a burnt offering fr from the herd, you are to offer a male without defect. You must present it at the entrance to the tent of meeting so that it will be acceptable to the Lord. You are to lay your hand on the head of the burnt offering and it will be accepted on your behalf to make atonement for you. You are to slaughter the young bull before the Lord and then Aaron's son, the priest, shall bring the blood and splash it against the sides of the altar at the entrance to the tent of meeting. So the last time we dealt with uh, uh, two of the rites one is the uh, presentation rite, which we could see from verses 2 to 3. And then the second was the hand-leaning rite from verse 4. So today we will continue and uh, we will look at two, two more today. So, I said we are uh, using the book of uh, L. Michael Morales on uh, his book, Who Shall Ascend the Mountain of the Lord. Yeah. So with this, let us go to the third one, which is the slaughtering rite. The slaughtering rite. So upon identifying uh, himself, the uh, uh, individual uh, Israelite, with the animal, declaring that, as it were, that he is the animal, or if I were the worshiper, I am this animal, the worshiper himself would then ritually slaughter the animal by cutting its throat. So tayo, nakakakita na po tayo ng mga kinakatay na hayop. So the, the, the first thing they do is to slit the throat. Why? Because it is the best place by which uh, sabi nga pinakamadali na aagos yung dugo. Okay? <clears throat> so this act by the individual demonstrate a willingness to die to oneself along with an acknowledgement and submission to the judgment of God that the soul that sins shall surely die. 
Yan ang nakalagay sa Ezekiel 18.20. So yung action na yon ay pagdidemonstra ng kanyang talagang willingness na kanyang, uh, uh, kumbaga sabi nga niya, to, to die to oneself. Okay? Along with an acknowledgement and submission to the judgment of God. Nakita rin po natin yan sa New Testament na sinabi ng ating Panginoon, you need to carry your cross daily. Yun. So, ibig sabihin, tayo ay patuloy na, kumbaga, yung pagbitbit ng ating Panginoon ng krus na yon. Saan ba siya nagtungo? Siya nagtungo dun sa krus ng Kalbaryo. At tayo rin, sa pamamagitan ng mga tagang yon na tayo ay magbitbit ng ating krus, ay ibig sabihin nun sa mga disipulo niya, sa mga apostoles niya, ay kailangan maintindihan nila na maaring magtungo ito sa kanilang kamatayan din. But dito ngayon nakita natin sa Old Testament na yung kanilang pag-offer, though hindi sila mismo ang nai-offer physically, but an animal instead took the place of the worshiper, but it signifies indeed a lot of things. And one of it is to die to oneself. Because, sabi nga, you are submitting yourself to the judgment of God. Na parang uh, ipinapa sa Diyos mo na kung sakasakali man na uh, yung paglapit mong yan ay tatanggapin ng Diyos ang alay na yon, Yung kapalit mo at yan ay yung hayop na iyong kinatay. So this is not to say that the worshippers' sins have been transferred to the animal. Kaya alam naman natin niya sa last the ating aral na yung tinutukoy dito sa unang parte ng Leviticus ay hindi kagaya ng parte nung doon sa Leviticus 16 na kung saan pumasok na doon si uh, Aaron the high priest at ang kanyang pagpasok doon ay para sa Ano nga yung uh, yung pasakasalanan ng buong Israelita at bago nangyari yan ay may mga ritual doon sa labas okay ng tent of meeting na kung saan ay hindi lang isa kundi dalawang hayo pang inaalay yung isa ay kanilang uh, ilele yung kanilang kamay doon sa isa at ito ay palalayain papupuntahin sa disyerto at doon ay pangaring siya ilapain ng mga mababangis na hayop. So, yung kasalanan ng mga Israelita ay na-transfer na dun sa hayop na yon. Pero dito makikita natin na hindi pa po yun ang tinutukoy dito. Bagkus, makikita natin ang importansya nitong uh, uh, right na ito, yung slaughtering right. Okay? Pinapakita lang dito na ang isang Israelita sa kanyang pag-a-identify doon sa hayop na yon na kanyang nakuha sa sarili niyang uh, uh, kumbaga tahanan isang domesticated animal na kanyang inaruga, kanyang pinakain ay kailangan ngayon mamatay that animal must now die why? because God always would want life for life Okay? Ibig sabihin ng alay para sa isang buhay ay kailangan isang buhay din. At sa pamamagitan nga nito ay ang pag-alay ng hayop niya. So the inescapable consequence of the worshiper's own sinfulness is death. Yung pung Israelita nung panahon na yon ay kanyang tinitingnan na maaring ang kanyang pagpasok doon kapag hindi katanggap-tanggap sa Diyos ang kanyang inalay na hayop ay maari niyang ikamatay. Ganun kaseryoso yung usapan po doon. Kaya nga po tayo dito sa in this side of the cross, okay, in the New Testament, makita na rin natin na nagkaroon din ng mga insidente na yung pagwawalang respeto. Nakita natin yan kay Ananias at Sapphira sa harapan ng uh, uh, Apostle Peter. Okay? And uh, sila'y nagsinungaling doon sa kanilang inoffer na yun dapat ay pinagbentahan ng kanilang mga ari-arian at tinanong kung uh, yan ba yung uh, buo at uh, kanilang pinagmalaki pa na oo, oh, yan, wala kami ni Singko na binulsa. 
At dahil sa kanilang pagsisinungaling na yun, sila ay bumulagta. Magkasunod ang mag-asawa, unang uh, lalaki at sumunod ang babae. Yan. So makita natin na nandun pa rin yung fear o yung dread. But ngayon sa ating panahon, nakikita ngayon natin how flippant people indeed come. Even to church, even Christians nowadays do not have that sense of reverence before a holy God. At yan ang gusto natin ipakita dito. Na hindi nagbabago yung pananaw ng ating Diyos. Ang makikita nga lang natin dito is that wala nang mga ananaya sa sapira na nangyayari sa atin ngayon. Dahil kung tutuusin lahat tayo, bubulagta kapag ka nakita yung ating mga kahinaan at kasinungalingan at mga kasalanan. Bagkus dahil tayo ay nasa age ng grace. We are in the age of grace. We are able now with confidence to come into the presence of God. But let us not take this lightly, my dear fellow brothers and sisters. But rather, we always have to prepare ourselves. Okay? Evening pa lang, kapag tulog pa lang. Kaya nga minsan, makikita natin pag Sunday, no, sa mga malalaking gatherings, doon, lalo na pagka-aircon, sa mga lugar na may init, gaya ng Metro Manila, ay ginagawang pahingahan o tulugan ang araw ng pananambahan sa loob ng kanilang uh, uh, lugar. Kaya po, hindi po maganda yon. Maaari nagpuyat ng gusto ng gabi at hindi ngayon uh, gising sa kanyang pakikinig ng salita. And so, because of this, sabi nga, we disrespect okay, God Himself. Because when people gather in church, we, when people gather as a church, because the church is a gathering of believers, the presence of God is there. Mabuti na lang at hindi na po tayo, kagaya nitong mga Israelita, na kailangan pang mag-alay ng hayop at merong pangamba at may pagkatakot na maaring ikamatay nila ang kanilang pag-aalay na yon kung hindi ito katanggap-tanggap. So dito makikita natin na the inescapable consequence of the worshippers' own sinfulness is death. There can be no atonement apart from death. We need to realize this. Okay? Nakita natin yung salitang atonement, atonement yung salitang kipir sa salitang he- Hebreo. Sabi nga, there can be no atonement apart from death. Pagtitingnan po natin, for example, ang uh, Exodus 21-23. Dako lang po tayo panandali doon. Sa Exodus 21-23. Makikita po natin doon yung uh, <coughs> nabanggit nga ni Pastor Jay kahapon at ang aking uh, turo din noon sa Gospel of Luke. Itong Lex Talionis. Okay? Ito yung, basahin po muna natin. Anong sinasabi dyan sa Exodus 21 <coughs> verse 23. But if there is serious injury, you are to take life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, bruise for bruise. So ito po yung batas noon na kung saan ay commensurate yung parusa na yung uh, matatamo sa yung ginawang kasalanan. Kaya makikita natin doon yung life for life. Kaya nga, tooth for tooth. Okay? So here, makikita natin na sabi nga, God's requirement for Israel to gain access is through death. Kailangan may mamatay by way of the sacrifice offered. Kaya po na itatag ang sacrificial system na yan sapakat kailangan yun ang maging uh, kaganapan sa mga oras na yun, yung pag-aalay na yan. So, just as in the Exodus deliverance, we see that Israel was not merely delivered from the waters of death, but through them. Napansin naman natin na ang bayang Israel, when they left Egypt, 
At sila'y patungo ngayon, ngayon sa promised land. Dumaan muna sila sa disyerto and they were there for 40 years. Okay? In the wilderness. At sila ngayon ay uh, inuusig, hinahabol ng mga Egyptian. At makita natin na ilang crossing ang nagawa nila. Mayroon yung crossing of the Red Sea. Na yun ang pinaka-famous sa lahat. So makikita natin that they not only were uh, saved by, sabi nga, the, the waters of death, but they went through it. And this speaks of the dying to the old life in Egypt. Ibig sabihin, ngayon, sabi ni Yahweh, akin kayong pinapalaya na sa bayan ng Egypto at akin kayong dadalin sa promised land, sa aking pangakong lupa. Pero wala na dapat titingin pa sa likod. Gaya ng ginawa ng asawa ni Lot sa Sodom and Gomorrah. Sinabi ng mga anghel, wag titingin sa inyong pinanggalingan sa Sodom and Gomorrah. At anong nangyari sa asawa ni Lot? Siya ay naging batong asin. Okay? He became a pillar of salt. So namatay din ang asawa ni Lot dahil lang po sa ginawang yan. So dito makikita natin ang mga Israelita, ganun din. Why? Because you need to trust God. You need to trust Yahweh in this regard. Okay? Why? Because it is now, sabi nga, a dying to the old life in Egypt in the process and preparation for life with God in the land of Canaan. Sabihin, panibago na ito. Hindi na ngayon kayo ay uh, magiging alipin ng bayang Egypto. Magiging malaya kayo. Pero at the same time, sabi nga, may panibago kayong gagawing pag-aalay para nang sa ganun magkaroon ng uh, katuparan na tayo muli ay magkakaroon ng uh, pagpipisan. Okay? We will have uh, gained back that fellowship through this sacrificial offering. Even Noah, for his part, together with his family, was delivered through the waters of death. Alam po natin yan sa uh, Genesis, ano? after Adam, dumating naman si Noah, and then si Noah, makita natin, still, the, all the inclinations of man was evil. Kaya sabi nga uh, ni Yahweh, na parang uh, lumabas doon, sabi nga eh, uh, bakit ko pa ginawa ang tao? Hindi naman sa nagsisisi ang Diyos doon, yun ay para lang sa atin, tayo naman babasa, nagbabasa ng kanyang salita para maintindihan natin ang matinding pagpasok ng kasalanan sa buhay ng tao. At dahil dito, makita natin na si Noah ay diniliver, sabi nga from the waters of death, dying to the old creation, so as to live to the present one. Kung gusto niya pong maintindihan ito, ay panuorin niyo po yung turo ni Pastor Jay kahapon, dahil ito po ang aming inaral, ito po yung uh, the, uh, the Noahic Covenant. Okay? In the covenant with uh, Noah, bibigyan ko lamang po kayo ng gist, this is equated to the covenant of preservation. Okay? So yung covenant with Noah was for life to be preserved. Okay? Hindi na ngayon uh, maulit pa yung pangyayari prior to this na kung saan ay nilunod ang buong sanlibutan at marami ang mga nangamatay. So this is now, sabi nga, the covenant of preservation and not yet the covenant of redemption. People from Noah's time are just preserved. So we see the, uh, uh, the progression from Adam's falling into sin and then from Noah, life is being preserved. And later on, as Pastor Jay will uh, 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 teach us the, the remaining uh, covenants, the Mosaic, the uh, Ibra, ah, yeah, Mosaic and the Davidic, that will culminate in the new covenant, wherein there we will find, sabi nga, the telos, 
the ending, okay? yung pinaka uh, sukdulan, kung ano ang conclusion ng lahat ng ito ay doon po sa New Covenant. So makikita natin that uh, yung covenant na ito was a reestablishment of the Edenic covenant or the covenant of uh, Adam and Eve in the sense that it is a covenant of creation but not already a per- perfect creation but rather a fallen cre- creation at that. Okay? So, si Noah would equate to being now the new Adam. Sa yung bagong Adam na kung saan nakipagtipanan si Yahweh para nang sa ganun magtuloy-tuloy yung talagang plano ng Diyos. Yan. So, in a sense, It's like giving Noah and his family a new lease in life. Sa totoo lang, dahil pwedeng wala na sana, pero may niligtas pa ang Diyos. At yan ay si Noah at ang kanyang pamilya. So babalik po tayo sa ating aralin, itong slaughtering right na ito, the slaughtering of the animal, represented an absolute Self-surrender. Okay? But not only an absolute self-surrender, but a self-sacrifice. Okay? No lifting up of oneself in prideful posture, but in humility. He is at the mercy of the divine presence. Ang mga Israelita, sa kanilang pag-aalay na ito, ay yung pagpapakita nila ng kanilang pagsusurrender na kanilang buhay, ang kanilang pagsasakripisyo, at wala pong pride na makikita dyan. Kasi oras na makitang may pride dyan, at makikita ni natin yan later on as we go along dito sa Book of Leviticus, na meron po agad-agarang pinatay ng Diyos. Okay? So our posture must be the posture of a humble person. Kaya nga sabi sa Bible, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. And none of us who are believers right now should think that by his own devices, but by his own cunning, by his own good works, he is able to come into the presence of God. Wala po. It is only by grace. At yan makikita natin later on. So just as in Noah's time, the covenant of preserving the world wasn't grounded on human godliness and goodness. Yan ang turo ni Pastor J. Kahapon. Aking hiniram lang. Instead, the continuity of the world is due to the mercy of God. Kailangan po nating balik-balikan niyan at huwag mawawala sa ating kaisipan na lahat ng ito na ating natamo ay dahil sa awa at grasya ng Diyos. Hindi tayo makakapagpatuloy sa ating buhay. Kau man ay isang kristyano o hindi ka man kristyano, kaya ka nagtutuloy, halimbawa hindi ka kristyano, is because of the common grace na binubuhos ng Diyos sa araw-araw. Kung bakit ang araw sumisinag sa ating harapan, kung bakit ang ulan ay nandyan, kung bakit tayo may gobyerno, these are all part of God's common grace to us, whether you are a believer or not. And that is why there is no room, especially for the believer, to be pride, to be uh, to be proud. I mean. So here we see Isaiah now prophesies to which Isaiah likewise alludes to of the sin-bearing servant 
in Isaiah 53, 4-7. Kung bakit wala sa atin ang pwedeng magmalaki, punta lamang po tayo sa Isaiah 53, verses 4 to 7. Tayo ng mga mananampalataya, ito po ang kadahilanan kung bakit wala pong dapat magmamalaki sa atin. Surely He took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered Him punished by God, stricken by Him, and afflicted. But He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on Him. And by His wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on Him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet He did not open His mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before, its shearer is silent. So he did not open his mouth. So makikita natin yan. Ito'y patungkol sa parating na suffering servant. The Messiah who was to come. To which John the Baptist speaks of in Matthew and likewise in, in John chapter 1. Okay? Makikita natin doon na isang araw nakita ni Juan Bautista <clears throat> itong si Jesus at anong sinabi niya? The Lamb of God sabi niya, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world tapos another day came and John the Baptist saw him again and he said, Look sinabi niya sa kanyang dalawang disipulo The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Kaya yung dalawang disipula niya, sinundan ang ating Panginoon. At tinanong, ano ba yung pinagsasabi ni ng aming leader na si John the Baptist? At yun, sinabi nga ng ating Panginoon, kung ano ang kanyang role na kanyang gagampanan. That he is indeed going to be the Lamb that is going to be sacrificed for all <clears throat> sabi nga so yan so tapos na tayo sa pangatlong right sa pangapat dadako na po tayo ito ngayon yung tinatawag na the blood manipulation right ito ngayon yung mga naipong dugo okay doon sa hayop at ngayon papasok na mga saserdote at sila na ngayon ang gagawa ng mga uh, bagay na ito so the slaughtering technique of slitting the throat ensured the maximal drainage of blood from the animal's body. Kung nakakita na kayo ng mga pagkakatay ng mga hayop dito sa Cordilleras, dun mo nyo makikita na talagang dun nga po talaga sa bandang leeg. At dun ngayon, ibubuhos yung dugo, lalabas dun. At yun iipunin nila. So at this juncture, the priest's labor would be toxic and extensive and intensive. Beginning with earnest dashing, tossing, scattering, sprinkling, splashing out of blood depending on the particular ceremony involved. Dito tayo, nakakita tayo ng tinatawag na pinikpikan, di ba? Pinapakpak lang yung manok hanggang mamuhu yung dugo. Pero dito hindi po. They have to drain the blood. And now the priest, trabaho niya, nako, ito ang gagawin niya. Iwawasiwas niya. At sabi nga, will sprinkle the blood. So typically, the blood would be applied to one of the sacred objects associated with the sanctuary and God's presence. So whether the altar of ascension, where blood is smeared upon the four horns, then some of the blood are dashed against its side and the rest are poured out on its base. So kung yung ascension o yung burnt offering uh, area, yung brazen uh, altar doon, doon iaalay, sabi nga may apat na horns yon on each corner. 
Doon muna iwiwisik yun ng mga saserdote. At pagkatapos yun, on all sides, at yung sobra, tatapon doon sa base ng altar. Just for one worshiper yun, ha? E eh, paano kung maraming pila yan? Grabe yung trabaho ng mga saserdote. <clears throat> Sabi pa dyan, if it's the altar of incense within the holy place, yung tinutukoy ko kanina, sa labas pa lang yan, sa outer court. Wala pa yan dun sa holy place. Ito ngayon, kung dun sa altar of incense, the blood would be smeared at its horns dun din. So, altar ng incense naman yan. Or in front of the veil partition of the Holy of Holies. Alam naman natin na the, the tent of meeting is divided into two. The holy place and the holy of holies. May curtain na nag nagpapartition uh, sa dalawa. Doon sa base nung curtain na yon, doon ngayon iwiwisik yung mga dugo ng hayop na yan. Kung sakaling ang uh, ang pag-aalay ay para doon sa altar of incense. Okay? Now, kung ang pag-aalay ay sa loob naman ng Holy of Holies, eh sino lang po makakapasok doon? It's only the high priest. So during this time, it was Aaron the high priest who goes there and only once a year. At ngayon iwiwisik niya itong mga dugong ito. Saan? Sabi nga, the blood would be sprinkled at the atonement lid of the ark or otherwise known as the mercy seat. Okay? Yung mismong cover ng Ark of the Covenant na kung saan nandun yung uh, cherubim, dalawa na kanilang pakpak. Sabi nga, nakatakip sa kanilang mata ang dalawa at yung dalawa ay lumilipad. Doon ngayon iwiwisik yung dugo na yan. And so, makikita natin na <clears throat> napakatindi ng trabaho ng mga saserdote. Kasi maaari nilang ikamatay kapag hindi tama ang kanilang pag-aalay na ito. And so the significance of the blood right for atonement cannot be overstated. Sabi nga sa Leviticus 17.11, malayo pa tayo dyan, pero aking babasahin na, states, For the life of a creature is in the blood. And I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. So dito, makikita natin yung tinatawag natin ang propitiation. Yung propitiation, hindi lang po ito, uh, yung una kong uh, pag-define dito, na ito'y pag-aalay na kung saan ay maibsan yung ating kasalanan, may nagbayad sa ating kasalanan, but also, it is to appease the wrath of God. Para po, yung puot at galit ng Diyos sa tao ay maibsan or mawala, matanggal, hindi niya maibuhos. Yan pong ibig sabihin ng propitiation. Kaya itong blood right na ito, itong blood manipulation at itong slaughtering na to ay hindi po maliit na bagay malaking bagay po ito so while the slaughter rite signifies death to self the blood rite ito namang blood manipulation rite is to be understood in relation to life to the worshippers own life sa buhay niya Dahil kung tutusin, sabi ko nga kanina, paulit-ulit ko sinasabi ito, pwede siyang patayin ng Diyos right there and then kung hindi tama yung kanyang inialay. And so through the blood manipulation, the soul of the worshiper identified with the animal in the semical right is being brought into contact with the divine. Dito ngayon nagkakaroon ng access ang isang Israelita para siya'y makapasok sa presensya ng Diyos. So it's probable then that the blood served as a purging agent. Anong sinasabing purge, 
purging agent. Pinepurge niya. Okay? At para lalo pa nating maintindihan, it is a detergent. Tayo naglalaba ng ating mga damit. Kapag gumamit kayo ng uh, mga uh, pinapakita sa commercial, sabi nga, yung commercial ay nadaanan lang ng sabon. Eh. Fuh, namuti na yung dinaanan. Ganun yung tinatawag dito. It is a detergent purifying the sacred objects from the pollution of the worship person. Yung buong tent of meeting, yung buong area na yon, pati dun sa labas, maging yung altar, yung brazen altar o yung altar of incense sa loob, lahat ng yan ay napu-purify because of the blood sacrifice. Dahil yun ang way ni Yahweh para mag-alay ang mga Israelita. So, in a way, sabi nga, napu-purify yung mga yon from the pollution of the worshiper's sin. Bakit? Yung tao, yung Israelita, makasalanan. Dahil doon, yung dugo na naialay, galing doon sa hayop, sabi nga, ay lumalabas na parang na expiate yung kasalanan. Ibig sabihin, parang na-transfer. Pero hindi naman as in doon ay na-transfer sa animal, but yung blood mismo symbolizes the cleansing of the sin of the Israelite from God's sight. Kaya nga sa Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, punta po tayo doon, makikita natin kung bakit nasabi ni Isaiah ito. Sa Isaiah verse 1 verse 18, sabi nga, Come now, let us settle the matter. Okay? Says the Lord, Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. So dito makikita natin na meron ang ipinapakita, pinapahiwatig si Isaiah. Nadarating ang panahon, sabi nga. Mismo ang Diyos makikipag-reason sa tao at sasabihin, Come, let us reason together. Kahit gaano pa ka dumi, Ang yung uh, kasalanan, sabi niya, I will make it white as snow. At dito, yung konteksto niyan, sa Old Testament, ay dito po sa blood sacrifice na ito. But we know that the culmination of this is in our Lord Jesus Christ. Nasa kanyang pagdanak ng dugo sa krus ng Kalbaryo, yung dugong yan, ay hindi na kailangan maialay pa paulit-ulit gaya ng ginagawa ng mga Israelita dito sa ating inaaral bakus He did this once and for all to take away the sin from us So if we consider now the twofold understanding of the word atone or yung kiper in Hebrew language where atonement includes both ransom from death and purification from pollution we could readily see the significance of the bride uh, of the blood right to life. Doon ngayon natin makikita yung importansya niya. Okay? Kailangan may ransom from death and then purification from pollution. And God used the blood of animals in this particular time in the book of Leviticus to do that. Like ransom Life ransoms from death and life wipes away the stain of death. Example, if an unclean Israelite who finds himself in contact with the holy, meaning to say, alabawa, dun sa tabernacle na yun, he just came in flippantly, well, that Israelite will die instantly or will be condemned to die. Leviticus 15.31 Therefore, the blood sprinkled, placed, and smeared upon the horns of the altar of ascension serves to wipe away and obliterate the pollution of death. Kaya doon, nagkakaroon ng confidence makapasok ang isang Israelita. Okay? Pero, alam naman natin, sa New Testament, we have this confidence. Not 
through the blood sacrifice of animals, but through the one perfect sacrifice that was done on our behalf by no other than our Lord Jesus Christ. That is why we can come with full confidence into the presence of God. And that is why we as Christians can pray anywhere, anytime. Okay? Because we have this confidence. Not in ourselves, but in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. So Israel's uncleanness, which could defile the tabernacle and its furnishings, is washed and given life through the blood manipulation rite. And thereby the blood of atonement is a gift of God to humanity and not the other way around. Wala po taong pwedeng magmalaki at sabihin niya, Lord, salamat na lang, ako'y magaling, ako'y mabuting tao, ako'y hindi gumagawa ng masama, ako'y hindi nag-aargabyado ng mga tao, at dahil dito makakapasok ako sa inyong kaharian. No, you cannot. You are just like these Israelites who are indeed full of the sin. You are unholy. You are defiled. And only the cleansing from the blood can atone for your sin. But no longer the animal in the Old Testament, but with the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so let us be careful not to place our hopes on our own righteousness na tayo'y magtitiwala sa ating katuwiran, sa ating kagalingan. At iyon ang iaharap natin sa ating Diyos. Huwag niyong iaharap ang pagiging reliyoso niyo na kayo ay may reliyon, na kayo'y maliligtas dahil sa inyong reliyon. Hindi po. Makipag-pisan kayo sa Diyos sa pamamagitan lang ni Kristo Yesus. Lumapit kayo sa Kanya. Siya ang may kakayanan para kayo ay papasukin sa pintuan ng langit. So ultimately, the goal of the blood rite and the whole sacrifice or sacrificial process is atonement. Reconciliation with God Union with Him. Tayo na malayo sa Diyos ay muling nagkakaroon ng paglalapit sa Kanya. Reconciliation. Tayo na dati mga kaaway ng Diyos ay ngayon kaibigan Niya. Hindi lang kaibigan kundi tinuring na tayong Kanyang mga anak. We are now children of God. And this has been achieved ultimately in the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so in ending, I'd like us to read Hebrews chapter 9, verse 23 to 28. Hebrews chapter 9, 23 to 28. It was necessary then for the copies of the heavenly things to be purified with these sacrifices. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than this. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with human hands, but that was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself. Now to appear for us in God's presence nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again the way the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood that is not his own. Otherwise, Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But he has appeared once for all at the culmination of the ages to do away with sin for the sacrifice of himself. Just as people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of the many and He will appear a second time not to bear sin but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for Him. 
Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your grace and mercy in the proclamation of your truth. With this, we are so grateful that we no longer need to offer animal sacrifices because one has done it for us. Our very own Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has done it all for us. He offered himself as a sacrifice for the atonement of the sins of the many. Thank you. We bless you, O Father. Receive the honor and the praise and the glory in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Good morning, my dear brethren.